Okay, hold on. The summer is here and I have been reading a lot of manga recently. I know, shocking, right? Also, hi. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've uploaded. I hope you guys are doing well. Now, before we jump into today's video, I do have some announcements and I guess I'm sort of going this summer on a mini tour throughout California to show you guys on these vlogging adventures, these wonderful manga comic book stores, anime figure stores, just otaku culture in general that's surrounding me. It's about time that we start tackling this. And the second bit of news, later on the year around October time if Japan has fully opened up its borders I will be traveling to Japan and there's gonna be a bunch of content over there a bunch of adventures so get ready for that but it is contingent of if Japan is indeed opening up its borders 100% at that time if not we'll just keep pushing it back until they do if you guys would like to stick around for the summer tour adventures or Japan later on in the year make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the videos okay we spent too much time in the intro let's go ahead and kick this video off let me know what you have been reading down below in the comment section I can't wait to see what you guys have been reading after the video Okay, let's go ahead and kick this thing off. I'll see you in just a second. Number one being crazy food truck. Step one to make sure Boogie likes your manga series. Put it in a dystopian genre. Step two, make sure that there's plenty of food within that series and that the food itself is well drawn. Step three, have your main character have a epic mustache. Step four, add a beautiful creative world that is just charming to be inside of. The base premise of Crazy Food Truck is that it follows the adventures of a, well, food truck owner named Gordon, who will be uh, right over here, and someone who we meet along the way named Arcia. I believe I'm saying her name correctly. Story kicks off in a way which I absolutely loved, and you get to be introduced to Gordon driving the food truck absolutely alone in this barren wasteland of a desert. You start to realize that Gordon is alone, like, like really alone in the middle of the desert. The first thing that we see Gordon do is prepare a BLT, which just happens to be the food element of this manga series. So you are going to get a bunch of well-drawn food in here with some phenomenal recipes, which is always an added bonus. Throughout the series, we start to realize that food isn't as abundant in this desolate, barren, wasteland, sort of futuristic, dystopian world that Gordon and Arcia find themselves in. I've, now, I've only been talking really about Gordon, but there is the other main character who is Arcia, and I don't want to spoil too much about her main character, but I will say the dynamic between the two is absolutely phenomenal, and Gordon sort of takes on a fatherly figure to young, mysterious Arcia. And that's sort of where this story kicks off. We have Gordon going in searching of ingredients, Arcia tagging along, and them going from town to town trying to sell food, making food, introducing us to the world, and helping the townsfolk with the problems that they encounter from town to town. Now, I do want to mention that Crazy Food Truck is rated M, so if you are a parent watching this or if you aren't okay with a little bit of nudity and just high action inside of your series, this may be one that you, you want to skip and look forward to you know later recommendations in this video. Now, the last thing for Crazy Food Truck is that out of all of the series here, I believe this is going to be the lowest commitment, so the easiest on your wallet, coming in at only six volumes in its entirety. Now, someone can fact check that down below. In fact, someone please fact check that down below, but I believe it's only going to be six volumes in its entirety, and at the time of recording this video, this is the first and only volume out in English. Now, speaking about deals and things that are affordable, let's have a quick message from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. Okay, one thing to know about me is that I'm always either taking calls, listening to music, listening to YouTube videos, watching YouTube videos, or simply editing. So when Ugreen reached out to me with their affordable wireless earbuds, I was, of course, on board. Their new HiTune T3 series has active noise cancellation with AI enhanced calls, Bluetooth 5.0 that has fast charging while being, of course, wireless. The T3 series is coming in with a 4.5 rating on Amazon, which makes them affordable and very easily accessible. And of course, less money on your earphones leaves more money for your manga hauls. Coming with four different earbud sizes to make sure they fit snug and comfortably. Now the earbuds themselves come in either black or white and both have smart touch enabled. So with a single tap, you can play, pause, play the next song, go back, answer and hang up calls, or even activate Siri. These are surprisingly good, especially for the price. So if you're in the market for new headphones and don't want to break the bank, check out Ugreen. Link of course will be down below in the description box. Now, thank you once again to the fine folks over at Ugreen for sponsoring today's video and back to the manga. Okay, so the next series that we're gonna be talking about is one that you guys have been recommending over and over and over again, Burn the Witch. Burn the Witch takes place in the same world as Bleach, focusing on the Western branch of the Soul Society over in London, or as the story would tell you, Reverse London. Right off of the bat, there is this really unique cover that it comes with. I mean, it actually comes with a cover. I mean, look at that. So this is what you see 
on most people's shelves, but what the actual volume looks like is this. Not only that, but this is a chonky boy for a first volume coming in around 250 pages. Now, I did mention this is in the same world of Bleach, and that is because, well, it's the same author of Bleach. So there's that to look forward to as well. Now, in this world, there are dragons. Dragons are a very real thing in London. The word dragon or the term dragon actually is more of a generalized term for a wide variety of monster-like creatures that serve all sorts of different purposes. If you are one of the few that can see dragons interact with them, you are permitted once you pass a certain test to enter Reverse London. By doing that, you will become either a witch or a wizard in Wingbind, which is sort of the organization that conserves and preserves, those are important words, dragons in society today. Now, as we're told at the start of the story, dragons used to be a real problem, so humans had to figure out how to deal with them. I think the harmony between dragons and Reverse London is actually, it's actually beautiful. There are some of these creatures that help us with natural gas, electricity, delivering mail, so on and so forth. There are two main female protagonists, one being Noelle, the other one being Ninny. They are partners working at the WB, starting off at the bottom of the totem pole, slowly working their way up. Then, of course, there is the shonen male protagonist, who is sort of that clueless, golden retriever vibes with a beautiful heart. Of course, that's him. He's Balgo. And then he does have a dog that's my favorite character, which is a little dragon doggo. Absolutely adorable. It does kick off when Balgo has been exposed to dragons for long enough, unknowingly through a series of events, which we won't get into because of spoilers. Now we have Noel and Ninny have to sort of protect Balgo as he gets introduced into this world, into the WB, into how their lives are operating as, as basically witches in this world. So those are my initial thoughts on Burn the Witch. Great characters, good, good, good world in here that's just a pleasure to be in. And I just like how these characters are interacting with each other and the character development that I can sort of foreshadow of what's going to be happening. It's just good shown and fun. Check it out. Okay, it's time. This is by far one of my most recommended series from you guys to me, and I finally caved, and I let you guys know on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, I highly recommend that you do so. It's my most active social media platform, but for those of you that know, you already know where this is going, but I finally started Sakamoto Days. This is such a good first volume of a series. Why did I wait so long to check this one out? I found myself binge reading this and like, I think it was an hour, under an hour, if even. After the first volume, I initially felt that I wanted to read a second one. So what I would recommend is we have the second volume for Sakamoto Days that is coming out this month. If I'm recording this in June, 2022, and I believe the second volume for Sakamoto Days comes out early this month. So I will link that down below. Make sure you pick that one up. And if you're looking to start Sakamoto Days physically, because you can read this on the Viz app and you can get current and caught up with that there, which I would also recommend. But if you want to read this physically, which I also recommend, and then I would wait for the second volume if you haven't started this already because it, it's about to come out and you're going to want to read a second volume after this first one. Okay, first of all, I love the characters in Sakamoto Days and Sakamoto himself, ah, such a good character. But for me, the MVP of the entire series is the wife of Sakamoto. For the series, we see a young Sakamoto who is one of the world's top rated deadliest assassins. But on one fateful day while out shopping at a convenience store, he he meets the love of his life and, of course, settles down and starts a family. So now we have the dynamic of a once hardened assassin been completely tamed by not only being a loving husband, but a doting father now. We quickly find out that Sakamoto has definitely not lost his touch when a new character gets introduced into the story whose name is Shin, who used to work with Sakamoto back in the day. Not only has he put on a few pounds, but he now has a small child and a loving wife, all while being an important member in their neighborhood. Now, without any spoilers, of course, we can probably guess that Shin ends up working at the convenience store and sort of joining the family, the Sakamoto family. And to be honest, it just sets up for this darling series. And I just found myself wanting to see their next adventure. Now, I love the dynamic between Sakamoto and Shin, but I also like the dynamic between Sakamoto and his wife. In fact, his wife is probably my favorite character in the story, at least the time of the first volume. Don't want to get into what happens later on in the first volume, but more characters do get introduced on top of that. And on top of that, the relationship that Sakamoto has with the community and how he interacts with the community members, it's just, it's so good. I honestly can't recommend Sakamoto Days enough. If you were on the fence about starting this series, let this video be a little push in that direction. Okay, 
It's time. We've made it to the end of the video. We're going to talk about Claymore. I just started this. I have the box set. I know a lot of us have been picking up the box set because it did come briefly back in stock for a while. So let me know if you picked it up recently. But this series, oh my gosh, it's so good. I love the setting of this story. It's almost like this medieval sort of time period that it's just, it fits so well with what's happening around us in the story and in the world. Another thing I really like about this story is that it's a cast filled with strong female characters, which I wish we just saw more of in Shonen. Another thing I love about this series so far is the character development and the arcs that are happening. Right now, I'm in the flashback arc or the flashback chapters of the main character and it's so heavy. My heart, oh my God. Another thing I like about Claymore is the pacing. It just feels like it naturally progresses very well throughout the chapters and that's quite important to me as a reader. Okay, one thing you gotta understand about Claymore is that there are these monsters that can shape shift to look exactly like humans and those are called Yoma. In fact, the only people that can fight the Yoma are these half-human, half-Yoma hybrids that we now called Claymore. Now, what you need to know about Claymores is that only women can become Claymores. They were obviously tried with men, but for spoiler reasons, I'm not gonna tell you why that route didn't work out for them. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna agree all Claymores are women. So when the story starts out, we're introduced to our main character. Her name is Claire, who comes in after, of course, the Claymores were called to exterminate a Yoma that we've been plaguing the current town. It's a really good depiction of how strong the Yoma are, how they can be very dangerous inside of a small town or large town, which we'll get introduced to very shortly after, and how dangerous and powerful Claymores are on the flip side. Now, Claymores by nature are very independent beings. But through a series of events, Claire actually accepts Rocky, who is the basically her helper or assistant throughout the story, at least where I am right now. Now. now, as the adventuring continues and they keep going from town to town, Rocky sort of becomes the human element to Claire's personality, and I think she is learning as much from him as he is learning from her. A very, very interesting dynamic that comes full circle when we get Claire's origin story, which is exactly what I'm in the middle of right now. The mystery of Claymore is why are the people that make Claymores the way that they are and operate the way that they do. There's a lot of mystery enshrouding them. And I'm not gonna get into much spoilers here, but I honestly think there's more to that group than meets the eye. And something tells me that while they're fighting for justice and protecting people from the Yoma, something tells me in my heart that there's way more to that organization that to that meets the eye and that I think eventually they're probably gonna end up being the villains or there's gonna be some sort of something that happens down the road. Like I said, I have just started the manga, so I have plenty more volumes to dive into. Uh, a lot of you might check out the anime for Claymore, and that's a total viable option. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I hate being that guy on the internet where it's like, you should read the manga, don't watch the anime, but there are some exceptions. The other one that I tend to talk about on this channel is Tokyo Ghoul. Don't watch that anime, just read the manga, but the new exception might be the anime for Claymore. To me, it just wasn't that great while doing some research for this video. I got to see a lot of clips. I just really wasn't impressed by it. And the story is just so much more well-received as a manga than the anime and the ratings clearly depict that. So once again, I'm not telling you how to live your life, but hey, if I were you, I would enjoy Claymore through the manga medium rather than the anime, but hey, to each their own. Every once in a while, I will enjoy a manga. I will discover a manga that just completely takes over my life. And I don't know if you guys get like that, but every once in a while, I'll find a series that I just have zero self-control with, I can't put it down. I find myself reading it way too late at night, page after page, and that one recently that has completely just, I'm completely focused on this series right now, is Doro Hidoro. And I am just about done with this story. Though I haven't read the very end, so I don't technically know how it ends. I am very darn close to the last volume of Doro Hidoro, so I will have my final thoughts and opinions on the series, but from where it stands right now, it's quickly turning into one of my all-time favorite manga series. Now, this manga series really sort of sparked this video idea off. I mean, I genuinely could not put it down. I did want to include it here at the end as an honorable mention because I had zero self-control with, with Dora Hidoro, but I am working on a script for the video and I almost never do these lengthy discussion videos on manga series anymore, but Dora Hidoro sort of sparked that inspiration from me and I am working on a pretty darn big video on Dora Hidoro at the time of recording this video. But that's it. We're not going to talk about Dora Hidoro anymore because it's going to get its own discussion, but I did want to have an an honorable mention for Dora Hidoro, all darn 23 volumes of it. Phenomenal! 
All right, so I think we're gonna wrap things up here, but let me know if you guys want me to continue this video series. I'm thinking about turning this video type into more of a vlog moving forward where I can just vlog throughout the month, letting you guys know what I have been reading. If that's something that you want me to do, let me know. But I honestly wanna start communicating with you guys all of the series that I'm reading. Once again, let me know what you have been reading down below in the comment section. I can't wait to see what you guys have been reading. I always get some phenomenal recommendations. It's just cool catching up with a lot of you down there also. Now, before I let you guys go, I would like to invite you to our Discord community. Discord community has been rapidly growing and has become home to a lot of new people. You can join the Discord by going to discord.gg slash boogie snacks. So of course, links for all of that will be down below in the description box. I am also streaming on Twitch a lot these days. So if you'd like to come hang out, I'd love to get a chance to meet you. Of course, links will always be down below or you can go to twitch.tv slash boogie snacks TV. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you'd like to go ahead and support the channel, go ahead and mash that like button down below. It lets me know that you're watching at home and I can continue to make more content just like this. And of course, as always, nothing has changed. If you like this around for more videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you in the community. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get back to reading some manga and editing today's video. So I will see you in the next one. Have a good night.